Hi everyone, and we are going to talk about topic two, solving single step equations by using the op opposite operation. So what we have to remember is that when we have equations, we have to have balance. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So if we look at the first example, we have d minus eight is equal to 17. So in order to solve the equation, we want to get the variable by itself on one side. So if we look on our left side, we have d minus 8. We don't want that 8 there, and in order to get rid of it, we must do the opposite operation. So since we're subtracting 8, in order to undo that, we're going to add 8. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other because it's all about balance. So we must add 8 to the other side as well. When we do negative 8 plus 8, those values are going to cancel out and we get 0. So we get d by itself finally. And then we add 17 plus 8 to get 25. So our solution is d equals 25. If we look to the right, we have v plus 12 equals negative 5. Now in order to get v by itself, we have to move that 12. Since we're adding 12, we have to do the opposite of that. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So we must subtract 12 from both sides in order to maintain that balance in the equation. Positive 12 minus 12 cancels out to get 0. And then we get negative 5 minus 12 to get negative 17. The third example that we have, we have a multiplication. 8 is being multiplied by j. But because we have to get the variable by itself, we must use the opposite operation. Since 8 is being multiplied by j, we must divide both sides by 8 because it is the opposite operation. When we have 8 and we divide it by 8, we're going to have that cancel out and we just get j by itself. So 8 divided by 8 is 1 or we can just write j because we usually don't write the coefficient if it is 1. Next on the right side we're going to do 96 divided by 8 and we get j is equal to 12. For the last example, we have seen addition, or we've seen subtraction, addition, multiplication. Now we have division represented. What is the opposite of division? Well, that's multiplication. So what we do is whatever we see in the denominator, we're going to multiply by that number. But whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. If we remember our fraction multiplication, we're really multiplying 9 over 1 times y over 9. And those 9s are going to cancel, and we just get y by itself, which was our goal. Negative 8 times 9 is going to give us negative 72. Again, we were applying the opposite operation that we saw, but doing that to both sides to maintain our balance. If we look at the next examples, we might see some that look a little bit scary, but that's okay. When we look at the first one, we have 1 fifth P equals 3 fifths. That is just like if you saw P over 5 equals 3 over 5. And what happens when we see division? Well, we have to do the opposite operation, which is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 5 over 1. Whatever number's in that denominator, if I multiply by it, those are going to cancel out. So all I am left with is P equal to 3. Now if we look at the second example, this one's a little tricky because we don't have one in the numerator anymore. We have two-thirds. And this is where that special word reciprocal 
comes in handy. We need to multiply by the reciprocal in order to get those terms to cancel. So if we have two-thirds, the reciprocal of that is three halves. And then again, once we do to one side, we have to do to the other, multiply the other side by three halves as well. When that happens over here, crossing, three divided by three is one, two divided by two is one, we get A by itself. But then we have A is equal to six, times 3 over 2. I'm going to write 6 as 6 over 1 so we can see this multiplication done out. Fraction multiplication, we can go across the top and across the bottom. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 2 is 2. 18 over 2 we can reduce to get 9.